Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay. Um, I don't have slides. I don't have much of a plan either. Um, well, this is mostly because, as I said, like Torch started as like people wanting to do particular kind of research, and there wasn't much around, and we created, and it has been growing like that. And one thing that we found really useful that has been happening is, rather than putting more stuff in, we actually chop things into pieces, and then they grow organically. So Torch used to be a big monolithic software that had like the, the um, interface to the BLAS, and at the same library on top of it, the interface to Lua, and then on top of it, interface to um, the neural network stuff, plus the interface to the plotting, plus the interface to this and that. And then as more people started using it, more people have specific needs and, um, and requirements for specific parts. What we did was um, we started using the advantage of having a system that has a package mechanism just like Python has, and then we started chipping everything into separate pieces. And this helped all of those pieces actually grow. One thing that became a problem at that moment is like how do you make sure that everything works together and then we rely on testing systems for that so let me make sure that everything runs nicely. But other than that, um, we basically, um, I mean, by making everything in the packages, if someone has a modification on something, um, basically, <coughs> anyone can do anything they want and it's a package and if it is actually helpful it's going to be used and if it is something really orthogonal then that package stays as it is and um, everyone uses it the packages that we use in torch day to day are not actually um, so we have a we have a common place named github slash torch it's a project page and in there i think there are something like 10 to 20 packages but those are really core algorithms, and anyone who's using Torch, using many more packages from, from, from other places, like either my personal GitHub or someone else's personal GitHub. And those packages, we rely on the fact that um, people, people keep good care of them, because if people don't, then someone forks them, and um, they actually get um, used nicely. And if there's something important that we think and we want it in Torch, sometimes you fork it and put it in Torch, and then we take care of it. That is also fine. But in the end, what is important is um, the need has to come from the community rather than like, I have personal needs about what, uh, what, what kind of research I want to do and what kind of packages I want. I can, I can talk about those. Like I want to integrate more distributed um, stuff into Torch. It can be used in distributed environments easily, but there is no distributed learning algorithm in Torch. But I mean, since we are interested in deep learning, it's a research topic by itself. Our so I was just thinking about that actually. Like I've been thinking about this for a long while since you put Wopa web it. I checked already. Um, this is something that we should actually um, make available. So Clement, uh, but our is in the torch. I know, but it is like a fixed thing that comes with Wopa web it. It has to be, I think, something that is just already used. Just I mean, you put the our library itself. In oh really? Okay, so that I missed. So then um, we didn't use it, and then um, there are multiple like um, parallel computing. Um, and threading um, packages that we have that lets you implement the logic of all reduce. I think in the end that's what also Clement did. Like we have a library where you can do this, um, like the tree structure. Like you can um, push computation into those and then get the gradients and such back. And then they are implemented such that you can pass any torch object. So whatever you want to do in any of those, you can do. But still, I mean, this doesn't solve the problem of how do you do distributed deep, deep learning. And this is not a software project. It's, a, it's more like a research project. And whenever this happens, of course, it's going to pop up as a package. But I see that this is one of the big questions right now, because with deep learning, one thing that has been proven itself is um, bigger is always better, and faster is always better, because more data is always better. So we need to we need to be able to scale these things up to up to that regime, and that's what that's what we try to do. So there's a paper coming out at uh, ICATS, I think, a speech okay. recognition conference about parallel training of deep whatevers for speech. The so there's 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 multiple models. There are multiple yeah. models, and um, I think we need to yeah we need to implement them maybe. 
and get them, but um, many of those require specific systems. That particular one, I don't know what it is, so I'll, I'll read about that too. So GPUs. Okay. So this is something that um, also, like, I know that pretty much any big lab that uses Torch also has a system where they use multiple GPUs at the same time. However, none of those is open source because at some point these <coughs> things become important for whoever created them that like, you don't have much more um, incentive to make it open source. So I'm hoping people in academia are actually, if they use Torch and if they develop something like this, they would make open source because we can't sort of, I mean, I have two heads, right? Yes, I work in a company, but when it comes to Torch, it's a different thing. I can't force anyone to actually make anything open source. So um, that, is, that is pretty much as far as it goes about the plants. It's basically whatever people want to do, um, um, it's going to be there. And if there is actually some interesting idea, um, I think the only thing that sort of anyone can, put, like, um, by looking at the history, what I can say is, um, if someone has an interesting idea and wants to implement it, there has always been help on how to do that. And that we can definitely do, and we will do. Um, if someone has an interesting idea, then I'll, I'll put time into it to make it work, yes. But um, in the end, everything is driven by research, as like we have been listening from um, the LibSVM and John. And um, it's basically about research where these projects go. It's not about the software most of the time. That's it. Thanks. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Mm -hmm.